uh, allow the privilege of seeing this day. As we know, there are many in this world that have not made it to today. Amen? Amen. 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 It truly is a privilege because, uh, uh, face facts, we are uh, not worthy. Amen. Mm -hmm. But he, he, he counted us, he counted us his children. Amen. It is a privilege to be before you this morning to share with you the word of life, the word of truth. Amen. Amen. It's good to see Sister Lillian back in her seat. Amen. Good to see her. Good to see her. The fellowship didn't feel right. Felt like we was missing somebody. So it's good, good, good. Uh, to see her back this morning feeling much better. Amen. 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 Ready to fight somebody. I'm playing. Mm -hmm. She said amen. So if y'all, anyway. Uh, well, uh-huh, uh-huh. Good to see Tony here with us this morning. Amen. 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 Good to see Courtney as well here with us this morning. It truly is a blessing to be in the house of the Lord. Well, I share with you, I share with you that um, if you missed this past Wednesday, uh, first Wednesday we do a prayer meeting. If you missed this past Wednesday, Lord, you missed a powerful time. And the Lord, we gave thanks to the Lord for all that he has done. We pray, I mean, it was just a powerful, powerful time. And if you, if you missed it, I encourage you, be here every Wednesday, but that, that first Wednesday prayer meeting, prayer service. Lord, sometimes it's just good to be together to go to God in prayer. Amen? Amen. 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 And it was just a blessed time in the Lord. Amen. Amen. If you are a visitor here, um, you are our honored guest. We're more than pleased to have you present with us. And um, we really appreciate it. We're going to recognize uh, your visit at the end of our worship service. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm just excited this morning. A, a little bit excited this morning. A little jittery this morning. Um, because so much is going on in the world. Amen. Uh, last Sunday, I believe, I uh, said that, you know, we need to be concerned. There was a shooting at a college in Oregon. And then this past Friday, there was a shooting in the morning at a college in Arizona. And then by the afternoon, there was a shooting at a college in Texas. Um, and that was the third one within the last two months. Um, it seems as though it just seems as though, I mean, terrible things are happening in our society. And church, we need to be praying for the situation. But church, we got to be active in this world to show them there is a better way. We have a Savior that wants to meet them. Amen. And uh, we, 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 we got to get out there. It, it is just so disheartening sometimes to watch the news. Um, and I, I, I won't lie, I couldn't wait till Sunday morning. Yes, yeah, it's a song. But uh, I really couldn't wait to Sunday morning to worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. Uh, this morning, I'm thankful for the brothers who've come beforehand, who've uh, read scripture, prayed, sung songs, and you blending your voices together. Now for the word of God. If you will turn your Bibles to Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. We'll re-examine verses 14 through 17. Romans chapter 8, verses 14 through 17. Where the Bible says, For this I will be reading from the King James Version. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The spirit itself bear witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, joint heirs with Christ. If so, be that we suffer with him that we may be also glorified together. Church, a question this morning. I might touch all age groups, but have you looked at TV and looked at sitcoms and noticed that there were certain trends 
Mm-hmm. Have you? In the 50s and 60s, there were such shows as I Love Lucy, The Beverly Hillbillies, The Andy Griffith Show, I Dream of Jeannie, Bewitched, and The Honeymooners. And every last one of them, there was a, a, a hint or a focus on family, right? In the 70s, we had such shows as The Brady Bunch, Sanford and Son, The Jeffersons, Good Times. There was a, a focus on family in, in tough times and in hard times and better times. Amen. In the 80s, we had shows like The Cosby Show, Family Ties, Different Strokes, Who's the Boss, The Facts of Life, Growing Pains, Charles in Charge, 227, Webster, Punky Brewster. Now nobody remember Punky Brewster. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. In the 90s, we had shows like Home Improvement, Roseanne, Full House. And Uncle Jesse just got a new show. Full House, The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, Married with Children, The Wonder Years, Boy Meets World, which actually has a spinoff called Girl Meets World. That's a new show right now today. It's apparently Corey's i I'm, I'm, I'm just hyping on it. Anyway, but Boy Meets World, Sister, Sister. Amen. All of these shows focused on family, right? But it seems like today we, we have more reality-based TV, right? But it's an unreal reality because it's only reflecting one part of life. It's an overindulgent reality, right? TV has always reflected the life that we live. However, in today's society with the advent of reality TV, it seems that life is starting to reflect what's on the TV screen. Mm -hmm. Sitcoms as well as other shows and influences are beginning to influence individuals to be more along the lines of a lack of a need for family. Why you say that, Ken? Because how many of us know about Real Housewives of the name of town? They've been there. How many of us are familiar with love and hip hop? Oh, it's just me? I'm sorry. But reality TV is throwing things and running things amok where we see dysfunction being the thing that is purported or the thing that is encouraged or the thing that is highlighted. Amen. Huh. You know, it's interesting that TV, it really highlights the negative in life. But when positive things are taking place, you don't hear anything about it. Well, I could go on, but that, that, that would be a, a jump on the soapbox there. Divorce rates are high in our country, even though they are dropping. But the fact that divorce is considered an option is frightening. Marriage alter alternatives such as open marriages or uh, such as open marriages are becoming more and more accepted. We are together until you feel like you got to do something, do something and then come back and everything is good. Hmm. Children are claiming emancipation from their parents and that's a real option today. But we can't just blame it on outside influences. We can't just blame it on TV. We can't just blame it on music. The question is, how active is the church in making a statement against things like this? Amen. What the world needs is an example. Amen? Amen. The church should be that example. Amen? Amen. So if you'll lend me your heart and ears to this thought, there's no place like home. There's no place like home. I didn't get that from, from, um, I didn't get that from her. I didn't get that from the Wizard of Oz. I, I got that because I, one day I was watching 227. Y'all remember the song? Yeah. Well, there's no place like home. Y'all remember the song, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, about to be a hymn in a second. But... <clears throat> One of the things that, that we began last week was we began a series looking at various illustrations within the scripture that illustrate the church. Why those illustrations are used. Last week we looked at the body of Christ. Many members, many functions, the joints that hold us together are love and that we are still one body. Make sense? Amen. Amen. And then last afternoon, we dealt with love as that drive, as that motivating force to really unite us, that we really have to have the mindset to love one another. Amen? As we continue, we're going to examine another illustration of the church, which is the family. You know, home is defined as the place where one lives, or permanently, especially as a member of a family or a household. So 
home is typically associated with family, and family is home, and there's no place like home. In the scripture reading alone, we see that Christians are defined as children of God, as well as noting that we call God Abba, Father. So why is it that the family is used metaphorically to define our unity? Let's take a look at family for a moment, if you don't mind. There are some sayings about family. One saying goes, I don't care how poor a man is, if he has family, he is rich. Amen? Amen. And that was from Dan Wilcox from MASH, an episode of MASH. Another uh, uh, quote, rejoice with your family in the beautiful land of life. That was Albert Einstein. It is not flesh and blood, but the heart which makes us fathers and sons. This was uh, quoted by Johann Schelling. The family is a haven in a heartless world, which is attributed to Christopher Latch. When you look at your life, the greatest happinesses are family happinesses. Amen. Joyce Brothers made that statement. Desmond Tutu was quoted as saying, you don't choose your family. They are God's gift to you as you are to them. Amen. There is a Spanish proverb that says an ounce of blood is worth more than a pound of friendship. Amen. And finally, my favorite quote the author is unknown. Families are like fudge, mostly sweet with a few nuts. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of ideas and thoughts about family. And in defining family love or familial love, we look to the ancient Greek and find that it combines two loves. It's philia or a mental love. It means an affectionate attention or concern. This love has give and take. Amen? It is dispassionate, meaning it's not based on how I feel now or how I feel tomorrow. It's something that will be consistent. It's a <coughs> virtuous love. This, this type of love includes loyalty. It requires virtue, equality, and familiarity. And then there's another word known as storge which means affection in ancient and modern Greek. Uh, it's a natural affection between a parent and a child. It's almost an exclusive descriptor of relationships within the family. It is also known to express acceptance. If you notice something about families, no two people are exactly alike. Family members can have problems with each other, right? But if you cross one of them, the whole family comes together, unites to deal with you and the situation. Mm. Family members help each other out, right? If there's a group you can count on, it should be that your family has your back. We're talking about support, loyalty, and acceptance. It then makes sense that God, instead of inspiring his writers to just note our relationship with him and each other as just master and loyal subjects, it makes sense that he would define us as a family. Amen. Put a marker in the scripture reading. We're going to come back to that. If you would, turn over to 1 John chapter 2. 1 John chapter 2. I want to pull three scriptures in which we will derive principles further defining this illustration of family. In 1 John chapter 2, verses 12 through 14. 1 John, the chapter is 2, verses 12 through 14. The Bible says, I write to you, little children, because your sins are forgiven you for his name's sake. I write unto you, fathers, because you have known him that is from the beginning. I write unto you, young men, because you have overcome the wicked one. I write unto you, little children, because you have known the father. I have written unto you, fathers, because you have known him that is from the beginning. I have written unto you, young men, because you are strong. And the word of God abideth in you, and ye have overcome the wicked one. That's 1 John 2, verses 12 through 14. First and foremost, 
we find that John wrote this book to his spiritual children. This is, in that statement, this is more than likely a group which he influenced their growth and development in Christ. Amen? Now, one thing you must know about when John wrote this, I think I mentioned this in Sunday school, but when John wrote 1st, 2nd, 3rd John, when he wrote uh, these epistles, he wrote this to Christians who were dealing with what we now come to understand is agnosticism. And what that is, or that being the backdrop, uh, this was dealing with the denial of Christ as fully God and fully human. That individuals were saying there's no way in the world that God exists. There's no way that this Jesus is this Christ whom you say that he is. So he writes to groups of Christians dealing with this type of uh, uh, environment around them. Church, are we dealing with the same thing today? Yes. Show enough is, show enough are. I ain't sure what the English is, but we show enough are. We are surrounded by individuals that believe in what's known as secular humanism. Secular humanism, apart, secular from religion, and humanism focusing on the power within the human being. We have individuals that focus on being self-made and self-saved. Did you catch that? Ain't no savior. I do this because I do this, because I just, at random, well, I ain't going, I ain't going, I ain't got time, I ain't got time, it's about Jesus. Looking back at the text, notice something about the writing style of the text that is here. Within Second John, within the book of First John, I'm sorry, you will see that John tends to refer to his brethren as beloved over and over and over again. He calls the group beloved. The word is agapetos in the Greek. And the word means or refers to a dearly loved person. This isn't someone or a group that he was just saying a casual hello to. He had a relationship with this particular group. And because he had this relationship with this particular group, his love for them was abounding. Amen? John in the text recognizes something, and if you follow along, I'll point it out. He recognizes there are different levels of growth within the family and addresses them independently in verses 13 through 14 and collectively in verse number 12. Something that he does, he calls out fathers, young men, and little children in the text, 1 John 2, 12 through 14. He says fathers, young men, and little children, or advanced intermediates and novices. Does that make sense? John deals responsibly or responsibly as to these individuals as a father, grandfather, and great-grandfather. Does that make sense? Amen. Mm -hmm. See, we see from the writing style as well as from the commands given that John views this group as family. And even that they view each other as family as well, right? See, for everyone to give ear to what John is saying to them in this letter, it implies they all have a loving bond, right? It takes love, truth be told. It takes love to accept one another, right? Amen. Mm -hmm. It takes love to accept each other at levels that we're at while helping each other to move to levels that God would have us to move. That's all based in love. If it's not based in love, then as you stay where you are, I'm going to stay where I'm at, and hopefully we get there together at the same time. That's not what this is talking about. This is a bonding love. Y'all follow this? Mm -hmm. Amen. It also shows John dealing with in-house business in the house. Amen. John doesn't just do this in 1 John, but he does it in 2nd and 3rd John. I got I to gotta walk away from a for a minute. I got to talk to y'all for a second. Um, something that I think sometimes... <clears throat> I have been, I am 32 years old, and March I'll be 33 years old, and I have been in the church now for 20 years. I was baptized April 9, 1995, and I'm not saying that to give off politics. I think I didn't say something about that last week. But uh, I'm, I'm saying it because in this day and age, in this day and time, my father, he was a minister in a Pentecostal church. Uh, they, 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 he was, he was well respected throughout the city of Philadelphia. As a matter of fact, he had preached at many congregations denominationally 
Um, because if it was AME back, no matter what they called him, he was a Pentecostal. Um, but they called him. And he would go and he would speak. I mean, he was just well respected. I remember many of the summer if we stayed there and I at, at his at his house, we go with him. He'd go this place, we go that place with him. And we just sit there and we look at things and we hear certain conversations. And one of the things that, that is so interesting sometimes is that I've met a number of individuals who when they come to the church, they look and they say, man, all this nonsense in here, I'm going to go to a Baptist church because ain't nothing wrong over there. And I've kind of looked and they say, oh, well, denominations don't do this, this, and the other. And I'm like, well, well you, you, you got to grasp something about denominations. And going with my father, there's times he'd go in the room, we get shot. What they ain't heard about? Well, you see, they, 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 they kind of got this principle. See, don't, don't, don't get it twisted. See, if you ever watch TBN, I don't, I'm going to explain why in a second. But if you ever watch TBN, you see TV Jinx, or you see Crackle Dollar, you see one of the guys, you ever watch it and you see it fades in, you hear the preaching, and then it fades out 20 minutes later, and that's it. Sometimes in the middle of a broadcast, it fades out and fades right back in. You know why that, why that is? It's because everything that's being preached ain't your business. Because sometimes the individual got to talk business to the congregation he's dealing with and can't let everybody watching on TV know their business. Mm-hmm. It's a smart, no, no, it's a smart move. There's been many a time in Saturday, I remember being at Greater St. Luke. I'm sitting there, they dancing me on the road like, what are they doing? Okay, guess that's what you do. But we just sitting there, and I never forget. Turn off the recording real quick. I got to say something to the church, and I say, ain't that something? You know, if, if we start to get to realize that in-house business, family business needs to be handled at the house. Amen. Which means family business don't need to be spoken of in the street. Amen. That means if we got a new convert, it ain't time to talk business in front of them. Because you know what? Sometimes new converts can't handle it. the situations that come along that more mature Christians can handle. We got to recognize there's a time. There's a reason your mother said, I'll tell you when you get older. Go to your room while they have a conversation with your mother. There's a reason that took place. And we got to understand, in-house business needs to stay in the house. Amen? Amen. 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 What we see here is we see the principles of a family dynamic. Every part of the family has to look out for every member of the family. This is a village. The saying goes that there, it takes a village to raise a child, right? It takes a village to raise a child, and you don't tell a child everything. Amen? Amen. Amen. If you, if you turn over with me to 1 Timothy chapter 5, and I just want to share with you verses 1 and 2. 1 Timothy chapter 5, and I'm doing all of this to illustrate certain points. What we saw in 2 John 2 was we saw the principles of the family dynamic. It's love, it's caring, and it's building together, and it's keeping family business in the family. Amen? 1 Timothy chapter 5. 1 Timothy chapter 5, verses 1 and 2. The Bible says, Rebuke, rebuke not an elder, but entreat him as a father, and the younger men as brethren. The elder women as mothers, the younger as sisters, with all purity. Now, to, to, to explain, in 1 Timothy chapter 3, we see uh, the word elder. And Paul explains what an elder is and what a deacon is. I'm not saying that for you to turn that. I'm just saying to explain something. Elder is the same word, is not the same word that's used here. The word here we see in 1 Timothy 5 and 1 is dealing with an older man. Some other translations will say an older man. So this isn't de dealing with a, a bishop or a presbyter poets or, or appointment, if y'all follow what I'm saying. Amen. This is talking about an older man, but entreat him as a father. Now that word as, of course, is used to indicate a comparison by the way something happens or is done. As or like is a comparison to. I felt like a million bucks. Didn't mean I had it. But I just felt like it. Y'all with me? The word as in the text is used. Though, this in this text is used to indicate something just a little bit deeper. It's not just like. Or it's not just similar to. This is familial relationship. Entreat him. Entreat him. See, let me, let me, let me walk through this thing. I'm sorry. If we look at rebuke not, an elder, rebuke not, do not express sharp disapproval or criticism because of someone's behavior or their actions. 
We don't disapprove of people because they're different. Remember, family love means acceptance. Amen? Amen. Referring back to 1 John and 2. But when it says entreat him as a father, when it says entreat, some versions may say exhort. What that word refers to is to call near, to invite, to invoke consolation, to call for it. Just like you would your mom. I am so happy. I didn't say this earlier, but I am so happy, church, that we have this relationship with one another. Amen. Amen. I'm, I'm, I'm excited we have this relationship with each other. Because the truth is, in Christ, we're a family. Amen. That means, John, you're my brother. Mm -hmm. That means, oh, you're my brother. That means, Mervyn, you're my brother. Might be my older brother, but you're my brother. Amen. <laughs> Some of y'all know. <laughs> it means that this is all together. Amen. It's not I'm going to treat you like you're my family. Oh, well, I'm going to treat you like my family. No, 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 no. It means that my response towards Sister Sally, Sister what? my response towards them is, hey, that's my mom. Amen. And the same respect that I have for my mama is the same respect they get. The same way that I would treat it is the same way I treat them. Amen. Because this is family. Amen. 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 Well, Amen. there's a reason I, I, I go there. There's a reason I explain that like that. And the reason that I explain it, I can't help but think about the shootings that have taken place in, in Texas at that particular university. The thing that is frightening is that the young man at the University at Texas, I th I'm not sure if it was, it's, 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 I'm mixing the two up, but one, at one of those universities, one young man was having an issue with one person, pulled out a gun, shot that person, and three other people, just because they were standing there. Not related to the incident at all. Not related to the argument at all. Just pow. Oh, oh, y'all here? You know, I knew what I wanted in a woman by looking at my mother. Amen. I knew what I wanted in a woman by not just looking at my mother but looking at the women who helped raise me in the church. Amen. I knew what it was to be a man because I watched my father. And when my father died when I was 14, it was the men in the church that let me know what a man does. Amen. And you know what's interesting about that dynamic is when I think about these school shootings and think about these individuals, Perhaps they didn't know how to resolve a situation. And because they didn't know how to resolve a situation, they went and decided, I'm going to take it into my hands because this is how I deal with anger. This is how I deal with this situation is that when I get pissed off, I need to shoot. Nah. And I wonder, hold up, so what's going on at home? I'm not just going to blame the parents now, but what's going on at home? Because we have so many laws and so many ideologies and so many things that go on out in this world about, oh, well, you, you, you should do this with your child and do this with your child. And children ain't scared of nothing but parents acting like they're scared of the kids. And as a result, the children just do whatever they want. We can sit them in front of a TV, put them in front of a computer, and say, now go ahead and watch something, and then walk off. So we ignore the child, and the problem is they do something there. Well, I'm so surprised. I never, he was learning something, and we ignore him or her. And because we stop paying attention, because we stop being a family, now the child went out there and killed some folk, and we sitting here wondering why. So the first thought is, oh, well, we were going through his Facebook page and he may have had, what's that, um, Asperger's syndrome or some type of autism. And it's like, why you got to go there? See, the issue was he didn't understand. See, y'all remember crazy? Crazy was a mental illness. 
crazy was you were thinking right. You didn't learn how to handle something right. Someone didn't show you something right. That's why one of the things when I see young boys in the church, my whole thing is, oh, it's me and you play. Mm-hmm. Yeah, what your daddy said. Oh, well, he, okay, well, roll with me. We're going to learn something together. We're going to walk together because, you know what? I don't want any child to walk past me. Something bad happened. And then I look back and say, I could have been an influence. Amen. Amen. Well, I was on my soapbox. I'm sorry. I just, uh, It's dangerous in a family dynamic to think that you're all by yourself. It's dangerous to you individually and it's dangerous to the whole family because if you think that you're by yourself, you'll do things without regard for your family members. This is precisely what we saw happen in these shootings. They didn't care. Oh, I'm not worried about it. it, There's no thought to what what will my mama think? No thought. What will my family? No, it's uh, I need to. Y'all feel what I'm saying? Lord have mercy. Because if you think that you're by yourself, you'll do it without regard for the unity of the family of God. If you're choosing to be a loner, you could be hurting the unity of the family of God and not even realize it. Ain't no loners in God's house. Ain't no loners in God's family. We are all in this thing together. Amen. One body, one family. Amen. Amen. Now if you would, turn over to the scripture reading. That was read to you here. Romans chapter 8, verses 14 through 17. We understand from 2 John the principles of family. We understand the treatment of family from 1 Timothy 5 and from Romans 8, verses 14 through 17. We, we've got to learn to understand and recognize our inheritance as a family. The Bible again says, for as many as are led of the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God, and if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with who? Christ. If so, be that we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. As a family, we all have the same blood cleansing us. Amen? Amen. As a family, all of us were not originally in God's family. Mm -hmm. All of us were as filthy as rags. All of us can relate to each other because we were lost in sin. But I want you to catch that all of us were. Mm -hmm. All of us were. See, you got to grasp this thing about Jewish adoption. Jewish adoption... It's it's similar to adoption today, but it was a little different. See, if you got adopted, certain things took place. If you were adopted, if if you were a Jew and you were adopted, you see, the first thing was there was remission. Mm -hmm. There was remission. Matthew 28, 19 through 20. Go ye therefore, teach all nations, baptizing them into, into the possession of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And teach them to observe all things wherein I have commanded. Acts 2.38 Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name or by the authority of Jesus for the remission of sins. You see when you understand remission. I got to pause on remission for a second because I want you to grasp precisely what it said. Remission of sins. What exactly that entail. See remission is a, a, is a medical, a financial and a judicial term. See, if your cancer is in remission, it means your condition has changed. It means you don't have it anymore. It means it's been removed. It means we can't find it. Y'all follow that? See, remission is a financial term. It means if you had a debt, your debt is now in a state of remission. It means your debt is canceled. That's why when you see a form that says remit payment by Remission, it's a financial term. Remission, it's a judicial term. If your sentence is in remission, it means that your sentence has been reduced or your sentence has been wiped out completely. See, we are no longer the same people we were outside of Christ. 
See, in a Jewish adoption, there's a name change because you are identified differently. Before, you may have been recognized or identified as the worst of all sinners, as the chief of all sinners. You may have been, furniture might have been moving when you were thinking about going to Christ. But when you got in Christ, you get called by a new name. Amen? Amen. We get called heirs of God. Y'all with me this morning? Amen. Mm -hmm. See, there's a state change in a Jewish religion, and, and, and this is in a Jewish adoption, and this is a little different. You see, in a Jewish adoption, the state of the child has changed. You're not just a hired hand. You're not just somebody that comes around. You're a son. Amen. See, hirelings get paychecks. Hired hands get paychecks. Amen. But once you're treated like a son, it's not a paycheck anymore. It's a reward. Amen. It's an inheritance. And Christ already died. Amen? Amen. Statement I said earlier today, Proverbs 27 and 17, says that iron sharpens iron, so a man sharpens the countenance of his friend. That word friend at the end of that statement, it means someone of close relation. So how can someone sharpen you in the church if you're not even related? <laughs> we are related in Christ. Amen? Amen? One of the things that was very important, and I've said this before, is that in Israel, in order for you to be counted as Israel, the people of God, in the Old Testament, you had to be born into the nation. If you weren't born into the nation, you could become a proselyte. And what that was, was someone who just followed their ways, but they had a way to initiate you in. And the way that they would initiate you in is they would take water, and they would take an individual, and they would put them in the water. And when they come out of the water, they would say, a lamb's blood and mark it on the head, the face, the forehead, forehead to signify that this person is now sealed into this covenant, but they're not really family. Isn't it amazing then that when Jesus had his conversation with Cornelius, he said, in order to see the kingdom of God, you must be born again, John 3 and 3. And he said, how can a man be born again? Shall I go up in his mother again? He said, no, 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 no. Unless you are born of water and the spirit, you can't enter the kingdom of heaven. Y'all follow that? Amen. What he said literally was, the same way you had to be born before is the same way you have to be born now. But this time, it's a burial in water. And because it's a burial in water, it means you rise up a member of God's family. Amen? Amen. See, in order for us to, 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 to move forward, we've got to recognize we are the family of God. Amen. We hold more in common than sometimes we might want to admit but we hold a purpose, we have a responsibility, and we hold on to each other. Amen? Amen? Family is home, and there is no place like home. Amen. I, 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 I want to I share a, a, a quick... Before, I, before I, I close with the invitation, I, I want to do a different type of invitation right now, if y'all don't mind. Um, if you lived a guilty distance from God, if you haven't been as faithful to Him as you ought to be, it's time to get right. Amen. Amen. It's time to get right. Why do, why do I say get right? In Luke chapter 15, beginning about verse 11, we have the parable. There are three parables in Luke 15, but the third one is the parable of the lost son. We typically call it the parable of the prodigal son. 
And the one thing about that, he went out, did rises, did whatever he wanted to do, but he came to himself and he said, I should go home because I know as a servant man, I can get something to eat. And when he went, he had in his mind he was going to go to his father and say, look, just make me a servant. But in the text, it says that when his father saw him afar off, now, look, you, you got to follow this line of thought. The son wanted his inheritance early, got his inheritance, ran off and wasted it in the, in the world. And when he ran off and he wasted it in the world, he was doing all types of mischief, all types of foolishness, spending all of his intent, just, just giving it away. And he found himself to a point where he's in the mud and he said, I need to go back. So if he was going to go back, many times we give the prodigal son more credit than he deserves. Y'all looking to be funny. Amen. He was on his way rehearsing what he was going to say to his father. His father was sitting looking for him. Amen. From the moment he left is the only thing we can assume that the father was looking for his son. And he sat there, the Bible says, when his father saw him a far way off, it meant that it wasn't he was there at the house and he ran down off the porch. No, it meant that he was looking for his son. And when he saw him, the father took off running to go get him. And the statement that he did, the statement he said, he didn't even get a word out. He said, hmm, kill the fatted calf. We're going we're gonna to celebrate this. He said, bring a robe and bring a ring. Put a ring on his finger. Put a robe on him. You see, we understand that in the parable, the master, the father, is God. The child, was them folks that run out there sometimes, all of us, run out there and do whatever. The father is still looking for his child. When he put the ring on his finger, it meant you are still important to me. When he put the robe on him, it meant you are still my child and I'm so glad that you're back here. It meant you are still valuable. You are still an heir of God. You are still, right, I need you in my household. You are my family. That's how the father views his children. Amen. And we've got to have the mentality that if God values us that much, we ought to value each other the same. Amen. 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 It's, it's time for this family, it's time for us to be, to, to, to get so tight, so close, so, 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 so right up with each other. Amen? Amen. 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 Listen, if you're here, not a member of the Lord's Church, I'll share with you that you can be a part of this family. Amen. I know we had a young man a few weeks ago, my nephew, that was baptized a few, uh, two weeks ago. And I know we have some individuals that are still contemplating, uh, listen. The Bible says that we need to hear God's word. I, I, specifically, Mark 16, 16 says, He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. But he that believeth not, the translation actually did it a little injustice right there. Some translations actually say disbelieve. It really, the implication would be, but he who disobeys shall be condemned. See, in order to believe, you have to hear. That's Romans 7, 17. What is it that you've got to hear? That Jesus Christ came died according to the scriptures, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, came, died according to the scriptures, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. When he came, he came to be a sacrifice that we couldn't do for ourselves. So he came and broke the hole that sin had on, on us. Broke, took, gave full payment for every sin that we've ever done, every sin that we do now, every sin that we do tomorrow. Yeah, Papa. And nailed it to the cross, became our Sacrifice our sin offering, our Passover lamb, love and mercy, yeah. and then resurrected and broke the hole that sin had on our lives. Broke the hole because the wages of sin is death, and He broke death mm -hmm, in His resurrection. You've got to believe that. You've got to believe that Jesus is the Son of God. Amen. What's the next step? You've got to repent. That means turn away from living a sinful lifestyle. Turn away from trying to trying to be down with everybody for all of this here foolishness that's going on and just turn and serve God. Amen? Amen. Confess Jesus to be the Son of God and then be baptized. 
for the remission of sins. Amen. Listen, if this is you right now, Amen. I advise you, just come on up as we stand and as we sing, but I share also, if you are, if you've gone on guilty business, it's time to come home. Amen. I ain't talking about coming home here. Mm -hmm. It's time to come home. I'm talking about come home to the family of God. Amen. It's time for us to get in this thing for real. Amen. It's time for us to build this family for real. Amen. Amen. Just like long lost cousins, you ain't seen them in it. It's time to welcome them back with open arms. Amen? Amen. If you need prayer, I, uh, please stand uh, Please stand right now. If you need prayer, please remain standing after the invitation of him. And then you'll utter your request, and then we will pray together as we stand and as we sing. Page 526.